Uh, I'm Craig Petrie, um, family doc here in Lynchburg for 22 years now, and you all should be here for the weight loss discussion. Um, what I'm going to do today is talk about um, the three most common reasons why patients have difficulty losing weight. Then we'll talk about the medications that we usually prescribe here, risks, benefits, side effects. And then um, we'll get you individually in the room to review your particular medications and um, any issues that you might have that you don't want to bring up in a group setting. Okay. So um, the first thing I want to talk about is the three things that most people do wrong when it comes to dieting. Okay. And the and this is probably for 99% of people. So this is where the money is. It's not about taking pills, it's about changing diet. But the pills will allow you to make these changes, give you the ability to say no to the bad things and yes to the new habits, healthy eating habits, right? Because I don't want necessarily anyone to have to take medicines. It's always been diet and exercise. It's still diet and exercise, but after doing this for over 20 years, you have to meet people sometimes halfway and say, hey, I know it's hard to do it. Let's use the medicines for a short period of time to get you motivated, to get you moving, to get your new habits. The reason we give Chantix, which is a smoking cessation drug to our patients for three months is because if you do something for three months, it becomes an ingrained long-term behavior. So if you don't smoke for three months, you're much less likely to go back to cigarettes after not smoking for three months. Well, if you stop eating fast food for three months or drinking sodas for three months, you're less likely to go back to eating and doing those things because you've learned, I shouldn't be doing that, right? So that's the goal here. The medicines plus the monthly accountability makes you learn how to eat right, forcing you to do it, and then hopefully when the medicines go away, if your appetite increases, you eat the healthy things, not the bad things that winds up getting you back in front of me having to watch this video. Okay, so the first thing is we drink water and only water. You don't drink juice, soda, sweet tea, milk, nothing but water. Water is clear. It's colorless. It doesn't taste like lemon, lime, strawberry blast. It's water. It can bubble, so that's okay. Carbonated water, Perrier, Pellegrino. Carbonated water with natural flavors. You can get them at Kroger in a can if you like the carbonation. But it is not pink, it is not green. It doesn't taste like sugar. I wanna break the habit of everything has to taste like sugar to be good. Okay. So coffee is just water that sat against a coffee bean. I'm okay with coffee. You just can't put international house of whatever sugar-based creamer in there. A little splash of half and half or a splash of coconut milk, I'm okay with that. But it's not this much milk, this much coffee. It's a splash, okay, so that's okay. Um, tea is the same, water against a tea leaf, I'm okay with that. You just can't put sweeteners in of any kind. No stevia, no agave syrup, no honey. Certainly nothing with calories like honey. But even artificial sweeteners are tricking your brain. Things have to be sweet to be good. We don't want that, okay? Questions, there's always at least a few questions about drinks. Give me some Is questions. Adding, like, fruit to your water? We'll get to fruit, okay. but yes. If you said, hey, can I put lemons and limes or even some strawberries and throw them into a pitcher and fill it up with water, that's okay. That's basically natural flavors. I don't want you squeezing oranges into it because now you're adding juice to your water, you're adding calories. But it can be lemon lime flavored or even orange slices in the water. It gives just the essence and some flavor. Don't spend a lot of water on money on bottled water. If you wanna spend money on water, get a Brita filter or something similar filter your water, put it in the refrigerator, nice and cold, and get a stainless steel Yeti or something and walk around with water all the time. Most of us are dehydrated all the time. It makes us hungry, it makes us tired. So drink, drink, drink. Enough that your urine comes out clear and colorless. If it's coming out, looks like a highlight marker, you're not drinking enough water. What other questions on drinks? Nobody asked about alcohol. 
<laughs> yeah, I have a wine cellar. I love wine. Um, every beer and every glass of wine is like eating a piece of buttered white bread. So a lot of people say, well, you know, I have one or two drinks at night. And I say, that's fine. Do you think you can lose weight if you eat 14 pieces of buttered white bread a week? Oh, right. So the butter is the alcohol and the bread is the carbs. So if you're gonna have a, 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 an alcoholic beverage, I like like vodka and club soda with a, with a lime. Diet, tonic, water, and gin. Some kind of alcohol that doesn't have carbs and a small amount. Right, so if you're gonna go out to a function, that's the kind of thing you order. You don't get a 600 calorie margarita with a Corona stuck into it, okay? <laughs> that's drinks. This, that's, and that's easy, right? Is it water? No, I can't have it. That's pretty easy. The second one's a little bit harder, it's eating out. Don't let people feed you. Feed yourself. They will stick as much carbs and fats into that meal and give you way too much. Why? Because that's what you like. And that makes you come back and give them more money. If you eat out more than once a month, you'll probably fail with weight loss efforts. Most people eat out multiple times a week. It does not work. Even if you try to buy a salad, they stick in eggs, croutons, craisins, raisins, and then they add sugar to the dressing. And your salad, which should be about 30 calories, is now 800 calories, right? And they put in fruit, and we'll get to fruit too. So it's really hard to eat out and be healthy. So don't do it. That includes DoorDash, right? Pizza, those kinds of things. Can you do it? Yes, but the, the example I give is if you bring me to Texas Roadhouse, and you bring out that buttered bread, and you stick that in front of me, and I've been waiting for an hour, eating 400 calories of peanuts, waiting for my table, I'm gonna eat that bread, right? Don't put yourself in that position. Don't get in the fast food lines. I've not eaten McDonald's in over 30 years. It's not on the menu. I don't even see them when I drive past, right? That's what I want you to do. I'm not getting in a fast food line. This stuff is toxic. Don't do it. You wanna go out to eat once a month, you can do it. There's always an excuse, right? There's always somebody's anniversary, a nephew, a niece, a grandchild, spouse, made up holidays by Hallmark. There's always a reason to eat. Don't. Do it, okay? Questions about eating out? Okay, that's one, a little bit harder, but still easy. This is the hard one now, this is the, and this is the most important one. Eating carbohydrates. Carbohydrate equals starch equals sugar. Starches and carbs are just chains of sugar packed together. Bread is sugar, okay? It's just packaged differently than table sugar. Bread breaks down into sugar. Rice, pasta, potatoes, anything that comes from a potato is sugar. If you think about it that way, it makes sense, right? Your body starts breaking that potato down from its starch into its sugar molecules. Your blood sugar goes up. If you're diabetic and you eat a baked potato, your sugar goes sky high. Well, what happens when your sugar goes up, your body releases insulin and takes that sugar and stores it as fat. Well, you say, I don't want to store fat. I want to burn the fat. Well, then you have to drop your blood sugar. You have to stop eating bread, pasta, rice, potatoes, chips, fruit. <gasps> fruit? I thought fruit was good for me. Well, there's nothing good about eating bananas, about grapes. It's just natural sugar. It's fructose, right? It's designed to be sweet, to tempt an animal walking through the forest to climb that tree, to eat that piece of fruit and poop the seeds out someplace else. Well, we don't do that. We go to Kroger, we buy a bag of seedless grapes and we sit down and eat them, right? That is junk food disguised as being healthy, right? What do you get when you squeeze, squeeze grapes? You get grape juice, it's just sugar. It's like drinking a soda. So people say, well, you know, I eat bananas because they have potassium. No, you don't. You eat them because they're good, <laughs> right? You don't eat oranges for their vitamin C. That's just the excuse. They're good because they're sugar. If you want to lose weight, you don't get to eat fruit. You don't eat to get bread. You don't eat, get to eat brown rice. You don't get to eat whole wheat pasta. <sighs> I thought, oh, that's good for me. It is when you're skinny 
and you're exercising regularly, you are allowed to balance your intake of carbs against your exercise. I exercise a lot, I get to eat more carbs. I'm a couch potato, I don't get to eat potatoes. Right? Does that make sense to everybody? So your body is never preferentially going to burn fat if you're putting sugars into the bloodstream. It says, thank you very much, I've got all the energy I need. In fact, because you've eaten enough of it, I'm gonna store more energy as fat to save you just in case you get stuck on a desert island leaving Dr. Petrie's office. That's to protect you, right? But it's, so it's never preferentially gonna burn fat. You've gotta go after it to make it burn fat. There's only two ways to do that. You stop eating all that stuff, you drop your blood sugar, or you exercise so much that you burn away all those calories and all those carbs that you've consumed, and none of us have that kind of time in the day, okay? So, questions about carbs? What about oatmeal, good or bad? Bad, yeah. What about, um, Yogurt, generally bad. If you can get plain Greek yogurt, and you turn it around and you look at it, it's got some carbs, but the protein's actually higher than the carbohydrates. But once you get the fruity flavored ones, now the sugars are higher. And so we try to stay away from that. And what do we put in our yogurt? Fruit, granola, right? So we can't, can't eat those things. So people say, well, what do I eat? I eat, the data says you eat about the same 10 to 14 things, and I just took away nine of them, <laughs> right? So what do you eat? You eat lean proteins, chicken and fish, you eat vegetables and salads. No one is here because they eat too much. The reason you're here is you're eating too much of the wrong things. No one's here because they eat too many Brussels sprouts, broccoli, cauliflower, and green beans, or too much chicken breast. It's never the reason. So that's what we eat, chicken, fish, vegetables, salads, eggs, or preferably egg whites, because the yolk has all the calories and the fat. That's what we eat. What's wrong with red meat and pork? Bacon, sausage, there's no carbs. How come we don't eat a lot of that? Really high in fat, right? And at the end of the day, calories matter. So you can't eat no carbs, but consume 5,000 calories in a day of bacon, sausage, red meat, and then go, well, I didn't eat any carbs. How come I'm not losing weight? So calories matter, but rarely is that the problem, right? Almost always it's those three things I mentioned. Okay. So you get to eat more chicken and fish than you get to eat red meat, pork, bacon, and sausage. You get to eat more, you get to fill up your stomach. The whole head of broccoli that you buy at Kroger is about 200 calories. The whole thing of celery that you buy is 200 calories. You can fit 200 calories of nuts in a closed fist. That's all fat, right? Nuts are fats. So if you eat chicken, fish, vegetable, salad, you get to eat and eat and eat and eat. When you eat fats, butter, olive oil, avocado, you just don't get to eat a lot of them. They're not bad for you, but you just don't get to eat a lot, right? Because they're... So oil is oil is oil. They all contain the same amount of calories. Some are better for you than others when you're cooking, but I want oil intake very low because it's so calorie dense. So what do you put on your salads? Balsamic vinegar, just drizzle it on. Or here's an idea, why do you have to make your salad taste like something else? Salad has taste. Don't smother it in honey mustard or in, you know, Thousand Island or ranch dressing. Food has inherent taste. And if you're used to smothering it, and making it taste like junk food, it's hard to ever appreciate real food taste, right? Same as people who salt everything. They don't like it if it doesn't taste like salt or that puts sugars on everything. So we want you to, to eat whole foods. Now you say, well, you know, all that sounds great. I know that, but I see the donuts at work and I can't not get them. Or I'm driving past Chick-fil-A and I gotta pull in. That's where the medicines come in to try to get you to ingrain these new behaviors that you are not a fast food eater. You are not a soda drinker. You are not a junk carb eater. 
Phentermine is what we use typically, and it's an appetite suppressant and a stimulant. So you can say, nope, I can pass on that. If somebody brings mac and cheese after church, nope, I don't need that, right? I'm gonna have a chicken breast, a little bit of salad, I'm good. Because that's the way healthy people eat. There's always an excuse to cheat. Don't cheat. The only way this doesn't work is you cheat, right? And sometimes, like every smoker knows they shouldn't smoke, every overeater knows I really have no business being in a fast food line or getting a 600 calorie Starbucks whatever drink. It doesn't make sense, but some people do it anyway, and it's hard to do. It's hard to just say, don't do it. Some people, it's just difficult, right? So um, that's where the medicines again come in. They give you that willpower and the energy to just say, okay, I'm gonna push it aside. Phentermine is like nicotine, like amphetamine. It's a stimulant, caffeine. So take it in the morning. You take it at night, you'll be wide awake thinking of me, and that's not a good thing. <laughs> it can cause palpitations, so don't pound coffee. You're not allowed to drink Red Bulls or energy drinks, but don't overdo it with tea and coffee because you might have palpitations, you might get a little tremulous if you're taking a stimulant and you're taking other stimulants. Can't take it if you're pregnant, desiring to become pregnant. Um, if you have an active cancer, we don't like patients losing weight. Uh, the oncologists don't like that. Um, there are a few medicines that they interact with, and I'll look at each person's medicines list. It's dirt cheap. Phentermine, you can get it at Kroger using the Good RX coupon. It's about six bucks, eight bucks. Four dollars and sixty-five cents. Four dollars. It's free, basically. Don't run it through your insurance. Insurance can charge you whatever they want to charge you. Or they're going to send me a letter that says, you need to do a prior authorization for my medicines. I'm going to throw that in the trash. It's five bucks. Get it filled there. Okay. Take it in the morning. If you take it at night, again, you won't sleep. Okay. Questions about the medicine? Ideally, no one takes pills. Ideally, you eat right and you exercise more days than not. It's hard though, if you don't see immediate results, you do that for a month, you lose a pound. That's really disheartening. The average weight loss for the first month of people doing this is probably 10 to 12 pounds, depending on how big you are at starting. We've had uh, lots of people lose 19 pounds in a month. Now people say, was that healthy? Well, darn right it is. It's healthy. Because you're not doing something silly like, how many grapefruits can I eat for a month, right? I mean, some kind of stupid diet. This is real life, eating real food the way that God made the food, right? I don't want you eating pre-made shakes and all kinds of meal replacements. Like, eat food. Chicken and fish look like chicken and fish. Vegetables and salads look like vegetables and salads. As soon as you start opening cardboard boxes and removing zip ties, you're in trouble. You're going up and down the aisles with the cookies and the breads and the starches and the artificial colors and flavors, you're in trouble. I want most of your time spent in the meat section for your lean proteins and in the vegetable section. You can hit the a little bit of dairy and a little bit of frozen foods on the way out. You're going up and down those aisles, unless you're getting canned vegetables, you're in trouble, okay? Give me questions about diet or medicine. Of the medicine? Yeah. No. no. So think of it as if you took extra caffeine. It's just a stimulant. So the, the biggest side effects are jittery, heart racing, insomnia if you take it too late in the day. I give everybody the 37.5 milligram dose, but it's a tablet. If you're really sensitive, break it in half, start with half a pill. Okay. Um, what other questions? Yeah, you don't have to wait, you can take it. Um, but it is a stimulant, you know, so um, it'll give you energy to, to work out. Now notice I said nothing about exercise here, because this is 90% diet. You cannot exercise away a bad diet. You cannot do it. So I don't care, especially initially, if you don't exercise. Now life gets pretty boring eating chicken, fish, vegetable, salad, and never cheating, right? 
if you're exercising regularly, you have extra calories to eat with. So my weight's where I want it, and if I exercise four times a week, let's say I burn 3,000 cal 3, calories a week, I get 3,000 calories of food and beverage, right? That's the math, it's pretty simple. If I start getting a little punchy, then I gotta dial back on my carbs and not indulge so much, okay? But initially, when you're losing weight, there's none of that, there's no cheating, there's no eating out like, except for like we talked about. But your BMI, your body mass index, as it goes down, then you can start going, okay, well, you know, I wanted to have pizza with the kids, but I did work out four times this week. I burned 2,000 calories and I had some pizza. Okay, that's real life, right? If you say, I hate to work out, I'm not willing to do it. Okay, well, then you never get to cheat. And I'm okay with that. But are you okay with that? Well, I can't work out. My knees hurt, my back hurts. Okay, then just don't cheat. You can't have it both ways. You gotta rob Peter to pay Paul. You wanna eat the stuff or drink the stuff, well then you gotta account for those calories. And I guarantee you, you're gonna underestimate how much you eat versus how much you actually burn. All right, well, I walked for 20 minutes, whippy. You burned 100 calories, right? That slice of pizza was 250. So it's really hard, to, again, to exercise away a bad diet. Questions? Anything. Nothing, we good? Okay. So um, you have to have a body mass index of 30 or higher to get the prescription. I think most people here probably would qualify. Or 25 to 30, but with some other diagnosis, high blood pressure, diabetes, something. Um, if you have uncontrolled high blood pressure, I'm not gonna give you a pill. If you have heart disease, I'm not gonna give you a pill. <laughs> that makes sense to everybody. But most people qualify. It's rare I have to turn people away. Um, side effects to um, dry mouth is a common one, which I should have mentioned. Um, which is good, because then you drink more water. And only water. Um, a lot of people will say, oh, I don't like vegetables. Tough. You have to eat them. If you don't like to eat them, what else you got left? right? Protein, carbs, and fats. And so I'm taking away your carbs and I'm just having you eat lean proteins. What else are you going to fill up with? All right? So you have to eat vegetables. If you're sure, like, I'm not sure what to eat. Um, we're going to give you all a weight loss handout as well, but buy a low carb cookbook. Get on Amazon, buy the South Beach Diet Cookbook, or just Google low carb cookbooks. A thousand of them will come up. You'll have it by Sunday, right? Start at the beginning and work your way through and eat everything. Don't like it? Got to eat something seven times before you're allowed to say, I don't like it. The data says you will like it if you try it enough times. Plus, if you haven't eaten all this junk, food actually tastes a whole lot better. Food has good inherent taste. What else can I tell you? So if, if there are any other questions from a group setting, you can ask me them individually. My staff will get you back, do your weight, your measurements, um, a little bit of blood work. If you haven't had blood work done, make sure your thyroid's not the problem, that you don't have kidney disease, any reason why we can't give you the medicine. Um, I'll look at your health history, and if everything looks good, we'll give you a prescription. You can fill that tonight. Um, and ask me any individual questions in private, okay? All right, I'll see you in the back. Thank you. <laughs>